Do you think majority of the famous A-star actors had to, at some point, make a deal with the devil? You're in the Hollywood Hills, you're around some of the elites, you got to see a lot of different things up there. I don't believe someone who fears God would be in an industry like this. From the disgustingness, the immorality, the push on secularism, occultism, it's really a demonic industry. You shared some story that happened with Michael Jackson's grave and the manager of Tyga. And Tyga, is that a rapper? Or? He's a rapper, yeah. Yeah, so his manager tried to recruit my wife basically to expand her business. And she really wasn't practicing that at that time. No, we weren't even married at that time. At that time, she was pursuing for business to expand. And that manager, before he became the manager of Taiga, essentially reached out to her because he had the connects to basically expand her business. He said, okay, come to LA. I would love to meet you. Let's talk business. So my wife at the time flew there, got flown out, sat down, had pretty much dinner with him. And essentially, he would just start asking very weird questions. Man, you know, we really want to help you. We really want to help you. But the spirits, they're just not, they're telling me like we want to get to you mm -hmm. and help you. But there's just a wall. There's this barrier like we can't really get to you. And so my wife was like, what does this have to do with the business meeting? And she was like, what does this mean? Like, What are you talking about? Spirits. How did this go from talking business to now spirits, spirituality? He's like, well, man you know, this is how it works. Like, this is how it works. They help you. So what happens is my wife's just like, okay, I'm comfortable about the situation. So she's like, okay, let's just carry on with the tour, showing them the tour of Hollywood. So they go to the Hollywood Cemetery and apparently Michael Jackson is buried there. Whether I know if that's true or not, Allah Alam, God knows best. And the next thing he asks her is like, I would need you to submit and prostrate to this grave. Just put your head down out of respect to Michael Jackson. Just prostrate to him. My wife knows in the religion of Islam, we're not allowed to bow down to anyone except the lost panel tab. She had that because she, her background, family is Muslim. Yeah. So immediately she said, I'm not bowing down to anyone except Allah. This is a human being. What can this human He's mean? dead alone and he's dead. dead in the grave. Yeah. Like just because he was a quote unquote star, it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. So my wife was like, no. So this has got to be like a human shaitan. This manager now is, it's he's shaitan. like a human because you have the shayateen from the jinn and then the human shaitan. So she's being really tested here. Subhanallah. Yeah. We think of this stuff in the movies or whatnot, real situations that are happening. And we got this in the story here. So this is a human devil telling her to prostrate to the grave of Michael Jackson. And promising riches and pretty much to blow up in the world, like expand, famous, your name will be known, you'll be somebody. My wife was like, no, I don't want to do this, but send me the contract just because it was business. So she maybe thought it was an odd character, weird character. Yeah. So she goes back to Buffalo. Her brother, he was studying law. And when she gets the contract, she was going to sign it. But the brother said, let me take a look at this first, because this is a legal document. So when the brother looks at the legal document, he goes, you're crazy if you're going to sign this. And my wife's like, what do you mean? What's wrong with it? My wife didn't have any legal knowledge. If you look at this, this means this person owns you, your business, everything that you dictate that you want to do in your business. He's in charge of it. You're crazy if you want to sign this. So literally, you are signing your soul away. Soul away, that's well, it. Yeah. She gets back on the phone and tells the manager, we're not doing this contract. He starts laughing like a maniac laugh. My wife will never forget it. He was chuckling and laughing like an evil laugh. And he was like, I'm going to send spirits your way and they will be able to harm you. And I'm going to make sure that they hurt you and your family. My wife was like, you can't do anything because that wall you're talking about is ayat to kursi And that protects pretty much from the shaitan us being attacked from the shaitan. It's There's something. a verse now from the Quran now. Yeah, as the Prophet yeah. said, yeah. if you recite this at night, Allah appoints two angels pretty much to protect you for the whole night until the morning. Mm -hmm. So this is something that the Muslims recite to protect us from the unseen mm -hmm. and the traps and deceptions and the target from the shaitan. We're encouraged to recite it after every prayer five times a day right. to recite it. This is something that just being reminded of this now, the story really encourages people to recite <laughs> to Kursi and you must this a lot. And, yes, God for sure morning night and after every salah so then what happens next so then next the guy tries to send the curse to her father her father was like yeah you should go to la you should go sign with him her father yes so he's because again he no god wasn't practicing yeah and he was saying things that he wouldn't say he would be like if you should go sign do it so this is the father now yeah but my wife's the, like but the brother was like no way no way isn't that no way so the father's not practicing now no, no. and now he's starting to practice yeah at the time he wasn't so no. jahil and yeah. giving jahil advice and yeah 
almost uh, sold off his daughter to shaitan. Basically, but in the sense, it was abnormal, as my wife put it. It's yeah. abnormal. He never says this before. Oh, he's very wow. protective. Yes. Very oh, protective. I see what you're saying. It was so. just abnormal. And it could be because of the shaitan, the whisper, as we all have whispers wow. from the devil. Yeah. Maybe you should do it. Maybe this will be good for you. Maybe this and that. So it could be that Allah knows best. But my wife ultimately did not sign. And that's when she got the wake up call to do like Lamborghini, to be on a yacht, basically to do things where you're with these models and it's just a bunch of guys on the yacht. And my wife never did any of those things. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. She just knew better to not be around this type of stuff. And ultimately she just abandoned the industry when she met me because we both were on that same trajectory. Like we want to get away from this. We don't don't want fame we don't want clout we're looking for peace where can we find this peace because it's not in money not in property where can we find it what's my true existence like purpose for my existence one morning i got called to work at like 5 a.m and when i worked at 5 a.m they wanted me to go to a private residence mm -hmm. i had no idea it was kanye at all when i get there it's in the mountains in the middle of nowhere in uh -huh. hills. i get up there and there's just rocks like big boulders like the size of your desk and they were just with big speakers so i said okay maybe this is a little shindig or anything yeah. like that i don't know ceremony when i got there it was interesting because they made us wear these very like raggedy quote-unquote clothes like that would just look like they were just shawls like just rags honestly and they made certain men wear certain colors and made women and wear certain stuff like for example long hair extensions all the way to the floor and they had to wear those certain clothes as well so there was a theme going on with it and so i'm like asking myself what is it what's going on here what is this really and then only a few guests were allowed to come high profile people like in the industry like Katy perry and so on and so forth and i remember being there and mr kanye wanted me to pick up the, the big boulder that's like maybe a thousand pounds Ka the did kanye west he told you himself or he had someone else tell you all of us that were there the event people so Kanye's telling you and it, he's telling you himself he moved a certain inch degree you're getting direct orders from Kanye yeah. himself yeah okay <laughs> so we're looking at each other like is this guy okay like he's yeah. making he wants us to move a thousand pounds it's like it's not yeah. humanly possible for us yeah to like a bulldozer or something just to move it an inch an uh -huh. inch I don't understand the logic in that but anyway so he asked us to move that and we did it obviously and then when the event starts he's blaring loud music and it's interesting because he starts singing about Jesus Christ Peace be upon him. So Kanye was singing about Jesus now. Yeah, but he's mixing it with his album. Is that that song that he made about Jesus? I wish I knew. I yeah. don't really know. But to me, this is blasphemy. It looked like he was trying to be a prophet or something. I would be that. So this event during the day and it started early, at, early hours. Like early like hours. Five, six a.m. So how long did this last? It was like an hour. It was just kind of like your typical church sermon, but he did it in his own way, and he was the. Oh, priest. so like you go to church on Sundays. Now yeah. you go to Kanye's church on Sunday. Yeah, even though. So he, and he's like the person giving the sermon, pastor and prophet. Yeah, basically. And it's yeah. like, I don't understand. And how are you mixing your own human words that are faulty and you're missing it? Was there a lot of people there? There was a good amount of people, yeah. whether it be the friends of those celebrities, I don't know. I know there was a lot of celebrities there that mm -hmm. were high profile. Yeah. Like Justin Bieber was supposed to be there. He wasn't there. Yeah. Katy Perry was. The thing to me that dawned upon me was that event. It just, I was like, how can these people like make fun of religion, really? I want to have you watch something and let me know if this sets off any kind of events that you can remember, anything that goes with this and your reaction to it. Most of the people fail to see a deeper connection between these artists and the satanic occult groups. One cannot but ask himself these questions. What are these symbols that reoccur everywhere in the entertainment business? Why are these symbols used by artists over and over again? Where do these symbols come from? What is the meaning behind these symbols? If you don't have an answer to these questions, then you have no right to dismiss this case. If you analyze Satanism, you will come to the conclusion that it's very prevalent in the music industry. Satanism, or black magic, is based on the worship of Satan and neglecting the worship of God. Satanism reached its peak in Egypt at the time of the pharaohs. This is why a lot of the symbolism can be traced back to this civilization. You will see a lot of Egyptian symbolism in the music industry. Here's an example of the owl that the Egyptians used. Does it look familiar to you? Yes, this same owl is used by the rap artist Drake. Drake can also be seen doing the 666 hand gesture. Each finger represents the number 6, making it the sign of the devil, with one eye. Here's the same owl on a satanic ceremony. 
Have you ever heard of Aleister Crowley? Yeah, he's the one that made the satanic church. This is Aleister Crowley, dressed as an Egyptian pharaoh. He is considered as the most notorious satanic magician of the 20th century. He identifies himself as the prophet entrusted with guiding humanity into the age of Horus in the early 20th century. Horus is yet again an Egyptian god. This is what uh, many of these artists, they go back to a lot of his teachings that opens up a whole different world of dealing with black magic, the jinn, and that whole do it thou will slogan with Jay-Z. Here you see rap artist Jay-Z wearing a quote, do what thou wilt, which comes from the philosophy of dilemma, which was developed by Aleister Crowley. This religion includes a number of deities primarily adapted from ancient Egypt. I think Beyonce too, she says yeah. when she performs, like she has Sasha or somebody come. Yeah. They're expecting Sasha. You know, she can she can do things that I cannot do when I'm in rehearsal. I mean, I can try, but then it just doesn't happen. I can sing notes and sing strong and do all these things that when I'm just by myself, I can't do. And I remember right before I performed, I raised my hands up and it was kind of the first time I, I felt something else come into me. And I knew that was gonna be my coming out night. So what do you think when you see this, these symbols and being around these entertainers and these elites and whatnot? So and I, like, when I saw all that, it's exactly, I was gonna tell you, it's like, there's a lot of Egyptology in it. And the symbolism is real, especially in music videos. It's uh -huh. everywhere. It's not all coincidence, mere coincidence. The checkerboard, yeah. the one eye pyramid, uh -huh. all these things you see, you see that symbolism being placed purposefully. It's not by chance or coincidence. I wanna get into this next clip and see if this brings back any memories. It is not uncommon for Satanists to develop multiple personalities because their bodies get possessed by these demons and help them perform. Channeling the act or practice of serving as a medium through which a spirit purportedly communicates with living persons. That's the definition of channeling. A lot of these actors believe in channeling. So they actually invoke spirits. I think why you're my role model has to do with the way you relate to vanity. We're lying in bed and we're rehearsing the astronaut Garrett Reed love seat. And then we launched into the first take and two voices came out of you. Do you remember this? Two voices and they were, they were simultaneous words, but they were two levels of sound. And I looked over at you, you were amazed, I was amazed and you said, well, sure. Sure, oh, I'm, I'm many different people. I said, no, Jack, you're channeling. Two tones coming out, two voices at the same time. That's clear. They, go, they do what's called method acting, where they invoke. Crowley said the quickest way to invoke a spirit is through acting. So they do a method technique, and they stay in character for the entire film. Jack Nicholson, in some films, scared people because he would play psychopaths. And he would stay in character even when the filming wasn't being filmed. And it was like he was possessed, because that's what they do. Heath Ledger, who played the Joker, and, and, and that had previously been played by Jack Nicholson, when he was killed, they, asked, they told Jack Nicholson and, and asked him what he thought. He said, I warned him about that role. That's what he had to say. A lot of the actors, they'll, they had techniques that it would either be the, as we know, method acting is like living the actual role. Like, so for example, I'll go out, if I'm doing a homeless role, I will live like a homeless person. I will embody that character completely as if I really am that homeless person and pretty much destroys your sanity in terms of your personal character, because now you're trying to be something you're not. Then there's the Sanford Meisner technique, which is the technique I studied, which is acting is living truthfully under the imaginary circumstances. So channeling that came about later in the second portion of that technique, because you were required to have a real circumstance where, for example, I love my cat and you have to think of something that is a, a dire situation and there's a press of time and urgency, which urges you to pretty much emotionally react. And you'd have to come up with an imaginary circumstance. So for example, in this case, it'd be a script, mm -hmm. it'd be a script because you have to embody that character, be that person. So you incorporate something real with something that's fake. And I 
remember I'd have to go in the back and it'd be a dark room and you just sit there and you just simmer in your emotions to let it trigger you, like really affect you, believing that what's going to happen to you is really going to happen to you. And subhanAllah, in a sense, it made me realize that I would do things I couldn't, like I was aware of it, but there was things like I just emotionally was like, how did this come out of me? How did do this? So it, channeling, I have 100% that that's big art that's required in acting for sure. Some of these people, when they do big performances like this, people look at it, it's like, how are you able to do that? And I 100% has to be the gym. There's no way about it. Like it's- So you would substantiate that there's some, they're opening up a door now to the unseen and this connection with the unseen world of the gym? Yes, 100%. Yeah. I mean, it's like Beyonce said, she has her character, Sasha, I feel like something entered her and does her performance. And which brings me to a good point now that I think about it, why do people in the entertainment industry, they don't use their real names. They always have like a alias name or something else. Being something you're not. These people channeling the jinns, they answer their call to help them perform in exchange for whatever they have to do. When I would work these high profile events, it dawned upon me a pattern that a lot of them were pro Zionism. So when I work for these people, you could feel a strong presence of we care only for our people and we're in charge. Were these people who were, would you say, following the example of Moses? No. Religious people? No. If they were following Moses, peace be upon him, and all the other prophets according to their scripture, why are they producing movies that are immorality mm. at its finest? It wouldn't make sense, God-fearing person, to put immorality and broadcast it, calling to evil. So these people, either they hide under the guise of the religion, using the religion to their means, or they're wolves in sheep's clothing, basically. And that's what it is. And these people, unfortunately, they shift society gradually. Like, if you look at how men and women behaved only 100 years ago, totally different versus today with the way the woman used to dress where the men used to be Hollywood shifts the society to follow these like you should be like this this is the normal this is the norm this is the norm don't be strange don't be weird be like us so we're talking about black magic in Hollywood and it's something hopefully after people listen to some of these stories anyone if it's a Muslim Christian Jew whoever is out there and has any kind of moral compass and says they believe in God or whatnot this is can you clearly say this is the industry of the devil 100%. of shaitan Shaitan, one billion percent.